This video is about one of the most destructive conditions that podiatrists face, the Charcot foot deformity. It is caused by several conditions, including leprosy and advanced alcoholism. But in the U.S. and other developed nations, it is mostly due to diabetes. If you know someone with this condition or with diabetes, share this video with them. Like the video with a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel to see the conditions that I have faced in my practice and learn valuable information on foot health. This is a patient in her early 60s. She has had diabetes for over 20 years. 15 years ago, she had the great toe on her right foot amputated because of a serious infection that had turned into gangrene. Over the past few years, she noticed that her feet began to become wider, flatter, and more difficult for her to walk. She has extreme difficulty in her right foot. You can see in the picture how much wider her right foot is in comparison to her left. Charco foot was named after a French neurologist from the 1800s named Jean-Martin Charcot, also known as Charcot arthropathy and neuropathic arthropathy. Charcot foot is characterized by breakdown of the bones and the joints and the soft tissue structures that support them. This patient has the classic rocker bottom deformity due to the collapse of the ankle and the bones of the midfoot. You can see that she has so much breakdown of the medial side or big toe side of the foot that the lateral side or the little toe side of the foot doesn't even touch the floor. The difference between her left and right foot is remarkable. There is absolutely no support in the ankle or the middle of her right foot. The heel is flailed outward. The lateral side of the foot does not make contact with the ground. So when she does walk, she's literally walking on her ankle. Charcot foot is a direct result of advanced neuropathy. The neuropathy happens gradually, starting at the toes and moving through the foot and up the leg with loss of sensation. As time goes by, these patients lose the ability to feel pain, temperature, and proprioception, or the ability to tell where their foot is in space. Not only is there breakdown of the bones and the joints, but there is weakening of the soft tissues and muscle imbalance. The clawing deformity of all of the toes shows what the muscle imbalance can look like. Patients must clearly understand the extent of their condition. Here we are going over her x-rays so she can understand what she really faces. In this x-ray view, we can see the level of amputation of the great toe. And we can also see the amount of malposition of the foot in relation to the ankle. In comparison, here's a picture of a normal foot x-ray of this view. In this lateral x-ray view of our patient, we can see collapse of joints, breakdown of bone, remolding of bone, flattening of the arch, and vast soft tissue swelling. Here is a normal lateral view in comparison. When examining foot conditions, I start with the normal or less effective side first. This gives me a better idea of what is normal for that particular patient. Her left foot is showing some early Charcot changes with flattening of the arch and decreased range of motion. The right foot is showing much more joint breakdown and much less range of motion than the left. This is the area of greatest breakdown and thus greatest pressure on the skin. 
Here I am feeling how prominent the amputation stump is and how contracted the remaining toes are. The ankle bone is very displaced. In her gait analysis, we can see all of the collapse of the ankle onto the foot, as well as the high pressure area in the middle of the arch. There is no body weight on the lateral side of her foot. There is no way any regular shoe can support this deformity. Because of the advanced neuropathy, Charcot foot is usually painless. Although in this case, because of the way she walks, and the deformity in her foot and ankle, this led to pain in her lower leg and in her knee. Early signs and symptoms of Charcot foot include redness and swelling. This may be confused as either cellulitis, which is a skin infection, or a blood clot in the leg. Therefore, it's very important that the patient be seen immediately if these signs take place. X-rays, a CT scan, and an MRI may be necessary to determine the extent of damage to the bones, joints, and soft tissues. Non-invasive blood flow studies of the legs and feet are also necessary to determine if there is any peripheral arterial disease. Blood work is done to tell how well the blood sugar has been controlled and how healthy the other systems are. If the patient is obese, then weight management is necessary to reduce pressure on the legs and the feet. If caught early enough, shark of foot can be managed without surgery, and the deformities that we see here can be avoided. Non-surgical management of the shark of foot includes custom-molded insoles, custom-molded shoes, braces, and a below-knee cast if early changes in the bones and joints occur. There is no cure for Charcot foot arthropathy, so management of this condition lasts throughout the lifetime of the patient. Charcot foot arthropathy is a very serious condition. The pressures placed on the bottom of the foot can lead to the formation of ulcers. These ulcers can become infected and gangrene can ensue. This can lead to amputation of the leg. So if you have diabetes and you develop numbness of the toes, feet, or leg, swelling of unknown cause, and redness of the foot, ankle, or leg, see a podiatrist immediately. Do not assume that these symptoms will go away on their own. Early action and early intervention can help prevent the travesty of a leg amputation. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up. To see very interesting cases and my approach and techniques to dealing with them and to learn how you can improve your foot health, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Follow me on social media at DC Foot Doctor. Most importantly, take care of your feet.